All right, today's a pretty big day. I bet you guys can't guess what that package is. Yeah, it's a Steam Deck. So I've been interested in getting a Steam Deck for a long time now. Basically since before they even released, I was looking into them. But I ultimately dismissed it because I have a Switch. Why would I need another handheld gaming console? And I just sort of forgot about it. But the Steam Deck ships in a carrying case in this box. That's it. It doesn't really have like a retail shelf box since uh, it's not really in retail stores. All right, so getting into the Steam Deck here. I have this really cool printed lid. Yeah, so that's all the different places that you can play your Steam Deck. Which, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, this box is kind of bigger than the whole setup. So I'm going to take the stuff in here out and uh, we'll keep on going. All right, so in the box we have our Steam Deck, which is in this case here, and the AC adapter. The AC adapter, once again, has a little nod to portal on it with the little box. This is a Type-C adapter. I'm not sure of the wattage on it, but it should be able to charge it quick and uh because it's type c you can use basically any dock to connect it to a tv and it's just super universal and for those of you who missed it valve has revised the steam deck not in a major way like steam deck 2 this is more like not even 1.5 this is more like steam deck 1.1 so basically they've changed some of the stuff with the cooling solutions and you can kind of tell from your serial number and how it's packaged which one it is. I know that this is the quote-unquote 1.1 Steam Deck. The absolute highest model, the 512, is the only one that gives you the quote-unquote premium case, which has a little blue thing, but uh, oh well. And this little tag here on mine is black. But I do believe on the early Steam Decks it was white. So, you know, the tag's black on this one. And I do believe that that means that this is the newly revised model. As of, I think, June of 2023, they started doing the revised models with the black heat sink which supposedly have slightly better temperatures i know some people who are worried about getting a steam deck because of it possibly overheating or whatever but supposedly this model with the little black shield is supposed to be better but uh i'll let you guys know once i get some uh gaming done on it and the cool thing about where they have this little lock is that the holes are still there so you can put like a little padlock or whatever on the case if you want to the spot's already there so unzipping it moment of truth now I have some accessories like a case and a screen protector that I'm throwing on it immediately. Just embrace it in its full glory currently. And uh, cause I'm about to throw a case on this and it'll never look like this again. So yeah, but this thing is super feature packed for the price. Like I mentioned, the performance is the same between all the models. Doesn't matter what you get. I got the base model one through a one terabyte SD card in it. And there's just so much as far as input you have a touch screen, two touch pads with haptics. You have capacitive joysticks, which means that they know if your thumbs are on them or not. And you can use that to set up gyro aiming and all sorts of stuff. Dual microphones and dual speakers, stereo speakers, and they actually sound really good. This massive 7 inch display is flanked by a, just an array of input from these face buttons to the D-pad, all sorts of options, buttons and menus. And we'll go over those in a minute. But in addition to your typical four triggers, L1, L2, R1, R2. On the rear, you have R4, R5, L4, L5. So you can map these to whatever you want. For first person shooters and stuff, I assume it would be very good. But personally, I was worried about them clicking in too easily, but they're actually too hard to press, I find. Unless you're pushing them almost horizontally in, like they like it feels like you have to almost push them inwards like it's it's kind of weird they are pretty hard to press as far as input i'd say that's my really only concern i think that everything else the haptics the buttons great love it only thing is the joysticks of course aren't hall effect which means that they won't be able to drift so if they do end up drifting it's 30 bucks i'll throw some hall effect sticks in here but i th honestly think that it's perfect as far as input support is just super there for the steam deck you want to buy replacement parts valve offers all of them through ifixit you want a 1200 piece screen to replace the 800 piece screen there's already a community made solution and you can install update to make it run at the higher resolution with improved color accuracy so a lot of people initially a year ago were a little fearful that the steam deck would be a flop because steam has had a track record of releasing things and then being like, oh, well, maybe that wasn't a good idea. There's so much modularity and community support, not just with parts. There's even software that gives you more performance, such as Cryo Utilities from the YouTuber Cryobyte. I'll link his stuff down below. Incredible tools to get more performance out of your Steam Deck without reducing battery life. But right now, my Steam Deck is basically stuck. I haven't done any of the Cryo Utilities or even the cosmetic stuff like Decky Loader to it yet. Maybe at a later date, but today... 
stock. So yeah, on the top of the unit, we have two separate volume buttons, not a volume rocker. Click in nicely. Headphone jack, nice to see. But it does work with AirPods, uh, Galaxy Buds, Beats, whatever Bluetooth headphones you have. Even Bluetooth controllers out the box. There you go. Because unlike with consoles, the Steam Deck is technically a PC that runs Linux. And Valve isn't trying to keep anything from you. You want to connect your Bluetooth headphones? Oh, it has Bluetooth. There you go. You want to see your frame rate on your computer? Well, it's your computer. There's your frame rate. This is all stuff that console manufacturers try to hide to try to make their performance seem better, not show their frame stutters, whatever. Valve is just full on embracing the fact that you bought the computer, you can do whatever you want with it, which I love. It's absolutely incredible. Aside from, I think, Fairphone and whatever the laptop manufacturer LTT is cooperating with, I uh, can't remember their name right now. I'll throw it up on screen. There's really not a lot of like support for if you buy it, it's yours. So it, it's just super sick to see that Valve's going in that direction and Valve's already printing money. So I feel like this will just extend the Steam Deck's lifespan and uh, there'll probably be more generations later, you know? So this is the Steam OS experience. Uh, if you go to Steam and put Steam in big picture mode, it's the same interface. They added Steam OS to, you know, basic desktop Steam through big picture mode. I've only downloaded games from the Steam store so far and works great. I haven't tried installing anything from Epic or EA, but there are workarounds to get those working. So this is just what the UI looks like. You have your touch screen, you have your touch pads, joysticks, everything is just there. And then as I mentioned, it's your computer. And Valve's like, yeah, you want to see the performance on your computer? There's your frame times on the home menu. And a cool little thing to note is that through this menu, you can see that the refresh rate is actually zero whenever there's no movement on the home screen so that increases battery life i'd assume and in the bottom here i have a one terabyte micro sd card i don't want to eject it because i don't know if it'll freak out but uh i plugged it in and then i went to the settings and hit format and then it just worked i was able to install all my games to it just fine the only complaint that i have so i went with the 64 gigabyte steam deck right smallest cheapest same performance and i've installed every game so far to this one terabyte micro sd card if you go to storage the local storage is almost full so it's like huh that's a little weird so for every game that you download on the micro sd card it has to download shaders before the game whenever you download something on a steam deck a little strange but that's how it works even if the game is downloaded to the micro sd card it will download the shaders to the local storage. Now it seems that it might move them to the micro SD card once it gets full because it did have a little less space on it than that. So I'm assuming it moves it over, but there's no way for you to pick where the shaders go. And I believe Valve has already said that in a future update, they plan to allow you to pick where the shaders go. But this is a bit irritating if I want to have a specific game saved to the local storage for whatever reason. But I just can't because it's just throwing all the shaders there, even though all my games are over here. So yeah, that's really my only complaint about it because I got the 64 gig model. And I'm sure if you got the 256 or the 512, you wouldn't even know like that this was an issue. But at the end of the day, at this price point, it's like literally one of the best computers that you can buy. And one of the games I've been playing the most on the Steam Deck is Halo Infinite. I started a new campaign playthrough and I'm just shocked by the Steam Deck. So the screen's 800p, so you know, obviously running at 800p, either 30 FPS, 60 FPS, whatever FPS you wanna run at, you can limit it, cap it, whatever right here. So I've been playing Halo Infinite, medium preset, and getting pretty much a solid 50 to 60 FPS. And in multiplayer, it's almost locked to 60. And this is without tweaks, this is just perfectly stock experience, which is really impressive. Now, the temperatures are pretty hot. They are probably in the neighborhood of what you'd expect them to be for a laptop style chip like this with a laptop style cooling solution. They're, it's probably in the right neighborhood, right? But as far as desktop temperatures, it is a little high. I've seen the Steam Deck hit like 79, 80, and it's, it just seems, well, the difference between low settings at a rough 30 FPS and medium and high settings at a smooth 60 FPS is drastic enough to warrant getting a Steam Deck, trust me. And one of my favorite things about the Steam Deck is just the speakers. Like on Switch, they're not that loud and they get drowned out if you're in a car or a plane or whatever. These speakers are really good. And like the stereo soundstage on them, if you're playing a game, you can tell what direction people are coming at you from. The speakers are really impressive. Better than a lot of laptop speakers. But yeah, if you guys want to see 
retro emulation performance on the Steam Deck in the future, or just some other stuff like that. I'll definitely have some stuff coming out soon. Maybe even a video where I replace my custom gaming rig with my Steam Deck and see what the experience is like. Right now, I just wanted to get a review up, letting you guys know, A, see what's in the box, and B, know what my experience was after about 3-4 days of ownership. Just what I thought about it. Only downside I see right now is how it installs the shaders of games that are installed on the micro SD card to the local storage. I bought the 64 gig, so it's a little irritating. I have almost the entire terabyte SD card full, and the storage locally isn't full yet, but it is almost full. But I have pretty much like a chunk of my Steam library on here without issue. But it is something to be aware of. It puts the shaders on the local storage without giving you an option. Supposedly this will be fixed in the future, but this is really my only big gripe about it. I know some people had them overheat and stuff. This one never overheated or shut down. It does run warm, but it's basically a gaming laptop. So yeah, this is basically a gaming laptop with pretty powerful specs, flanked by tons of different controls and a pretty decent screen. Lots of people have complained about the color accuracy, but it's a nice big screen. It works. So yeah, if you're thinking about getting a Steam Deck, but you're unsure... I think it's totally worth it. The small issues, such as it being a computer, you know, so you might have the occasional jank trying to open some games. I think that it's just a totally awesome handheld. And if you're thinking about getting one, don't hesitate. Just, you know, save up, make sure you have the money, of course, because it is a pretty steeply priced unit. But if you had the money and you're thinking about it, I definitely recommend it. So thank you all for stopping by. That's all from me. I'm out. Peace.